Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for the premiere performances of Utopia Touch, choreographed by Vladimir Kremenovic and performed by a cast of Seattle dance artists. My name is Erin Johnson and I am the Artistic Director at Velocity Dance Center. And on behalf of Velocity and our co-presenters, the Seattle Design Festival and Common Form, we are honored to welcome you to this virtual live performance. We have viewers and viewing parties hosted around the world in Seattle, Portland, Vancouver, Oakland, Bosnia, and Serbia. And these are the locations that we know of, so please feel free to add in the chat where you're watching from. As we celebrate the joy of being virtually together while being physically located across the world, we also celebrate and honor the people indigenous to the lands that we all live and work. In Seattle, Velocity is part of a settlement on the unceded ancestral lands of the Duwamish people. And we recognize the Duwamish people past and present and all Coast Salish people as the contemporary and rightful stewards of this land. This performance is a part of a series that Vlad has been working on at Velocity for the past two years. When he began to imagine that a live virtual performance could be the next expression of this idea during a pandemic, Vlad spoke about how he has relied on digital technology as a space for connection long before we were social distancing. Since he moved to the US for school, digital technology has been the way that he stays connected to his family in Bosnia. It has always been a virtual space where he spends time and keeps connected with loved ones. So, a live online format seemed like a natural venue for the next work in this series, which is all about finding connection and humanity in the contradictions of both brutalist architecture and political ideologies. Like brutalism, these bare digital structures that we are getting to know seem cold and rigid, but they are nonetheless a space where we can create connection, warmth, and movement. The container in its structure melts away and touch is possible. So before I hand it over to the artists, Vlad asked me to give a little bit of practical context for today's performance. This durational performance is intended to be experienced as a virtual installation, which means there's no beginning, there's no end, there's no narrative arc to the piece. So you can come and go, uh, stay as long as you want. During the show, we invite you to talk to the people you're with uh, in person and, and chat with the people you're with virtually. Uh, we, we invite you to, to go and come back and get a drink and uh, read and write and think. Um, and uh, oh, also definitely check out the slideshow and reading materials that we provide on our website. And uh, a quick note about technical difficulties. Um, instead of attempting to eradicate these, um, this inevitable lagging or glitching that comes from using digital technologies and being in digital spaces, we are embracing it as a part of the performance. Uh, as Vlad put it, I see it as a way to celebrate the year of long pauses, lost connections, and garbled sentences that allow me and countless other immigrants around the globe to remain co connected to distant families and cultures. So with that, I wanna thank you again for joining us. Thank you to the Seattle Design Festival and the other watch hosts around the globe. Thank you to Seattle's For Culture for funding this project. And if you feel inclined to donate, we'll have links to do so on the screen. Enjoy. Zdravo svima, dobrodošli i hvala vam što ste nam se pridružili na premjernim izvedbama komada Utopija Dodir, za koje je koreografiju radio Vladimir Kremenović i koji izvodi grupu umjetnika iz Sijatla. Ja sam Jelena Stefanovska, vladina prijateljca još iz srednjoškolskih dana i veliko mi je zadovoljstvo i čast da vam poželim dobrodošlicu na ovaj virtualni performans u živo. Vlada mi je davno obećao da će me voditi na premijeru neke svoje izvedbe i evo nas sad ovdje. Gledalci širom svijeta su trenutno prisutni, iz država u Sjedinjenim američkim državama kao što su Washington, Oregon, Kalifornija, zatim Kanada, Srbija, Bosna i Hercegovina, a to su samo neka mjesta iz kojih znamo da ima gledalaca, a vi slobodno napišite u četu odakle vi gledate ovu izvedbu. 
kao što rekao, Vlado znam još od srednje škole i znam da moj oduvijek bio san da odi u Ameriku i da se bavi svojim djelama strastima, plesom i filmom. I zato apsolutno ne iznenađuje da danas gledamo na ovaj način plesni komad za koji je on radio koreografiju. I prije ove čitave situacije, to jest pandemije, Vlado se osvaljao na tehnologiju svakodnevno, jer je to bio jedini način da komunicira sa svojom porodicom i prijateljima preko okeana. Ovo je jednostavno idući korak i u njegovom i u našem korištenju tehnologije. Tehnologija i ova virtualna druženja nam, posebno u ovom periodu, omogućavaju da ostanemo u kontaktu sa ljudima koji su nam bitni i sa dešavanjima koje nas interesuju na jedan bezbjedan način. Možda nam se ovaj način komuniciranja čini kao nešto hladno i nešto što stvara distancu, ali nam zapravo pomaže da ostanemo zajedno, da ostanemo u kontaktu. Još jedna stvar koja je meni uvijek djelovala hladno i pomalo uvredljivo za okoliš je brutalistička arhitektura i objekti nastali u tom stilu. Međutim, na jednom putovanju sa vladom, on mi je pokazao da i ta mjesta mogu biti lijepa, zbog onoga čemu služe i zbog onoga što se može dešavati u njima. Uvijek je bitnija funkcija, ideja, mašta, mogućnost i brojne druge stvari, spojašnosti na nekom desetom mjestu. Time je inspirisan i ovaj performans. Bitno je da znate da ovaj komad nema početak, sredinu ili kraj. Možete se priključiti u bilo kojem momentu, ostati koliko želite, otići, vratiti se ili ne. Na vama je. Također bih da kažem da možete, čak i poželjno, da tokom izvedbe pričate sa ljudima sa kojima gledate ovo. Da crtate, da pišete, to je recimo savjet koji je meni vlado dao. I da odete na website i pogledate slideshow i materijale koji su tamo. Hvala vam još jednom što ste nam se pridružili i uživajte.
Thank you.
Hello. All right, we're gonna start a live Q&A right now. So thank you all for joining us for that performance and for this Q&A. Um, I just wanted to ask, I know this is the first performance that your family and friends in Banya Luka have been able to see live. So could you just speak to what digital performance means to you per, for providing that incredible opportunity and in this time of kind of surreal social isolation? Uh, it sounds like you're muted. There you go. <laughs> of course I was. Um... Uh, welcome everyone and uh, yeah thanks for sticking around for the Q&A if you did. Um, if you have questions I would recommend you uh, write them down in the comments on, on Facebook. If you want an answer in Serbian I'm gonna uh, just write it in Serbian I'm gonna respond in Serbian. If, if you read the question in English I'm gonna respond in English. Znači, ako imate uh, neka pitanja ili komentare na srpskom i hoćete da čujete odgovor na srpskom od mene, onda napišite u, na Facebooku u komentarima pitanje na srpskom i tako ja ću odgovoriti. Ili hrvatsko basinski, da, da se sad ne. Uglavnom, um, uh, yeah, the, the thing that was really important to me uh, in this process was that they could join us live. Um, and it's it's partly because we've had this digital relationship as as like a lot of people know, even like non-immigrants, people who like, you know, live away from their parents in the United States. There's this like constant relationship that we've had um, over like Viber or WhatsApp or like um, whatever other app. And it's always this like mediated experience. And um, as soon as I started kind of thinking about this piece and bringing it on to an online version, um, that kind of came to mind. Um, for those of you who don't know, there was a, a live version of this uh, performance in December, and this is all part of like a larger cycle of works called Utopia. So there's going to be um, a bunch of uh, stuff coming up over the next year at least. And so if you want kind of keep up with it, you should follow us on Instagram at uh, common at common form um, underscore. And yeah. All right. So uh, one question that came up watching the piece was we had a question um, from a viewer about basically if you could elaborate on the significance of the synchronization and its variations. Uh, for them, it evoked feelings of people coming and going, meeting and parting, uniting and dispersing, which is something that's really, I think, beautiful to a lot of us right now in these times of social isolation. Um, so what did those moments of synchronization mean to you or to your performers, if they wanna to speak to that? Um, well, as I said, there was a December version of this piece that followed kind of the same score, but it was like uh, less people and uh, different movements. Um, and one thing in December that emerged for me was there was this like sense of when people came together in synchronization, there was just this like beautiful bond and connection that you that I felt watching it. Um, and then there would be these long periods where people would just be in their own worlds and then meet again. And that was so beautiful, especially because like in that space, the dancers never touched. And so um, that was kind of the, the birthplace or like the origin of this performance was that kind of lack, a lack of touch and the moments of coming together. And then I was thinking during quarantine when all of us have to kind of live apart, um, isolate and uh, not have physical contact. I thought like bringing back this piece in how it was presented in the December was like perfect for the conditions in which we live right now. And then especially one thing that was technologically really demanding and interesting was that um, 
beyond people like syncing up what the movement was, um, we have the metronome beat and the metronome beat would sometimes come across differently to people in the chat, in the Zoom room. Um, and so that would cause people to like fall out of sync entirely, which was really stressful for everyone, but also kind of beautiful because then we would find each other eventually. And that was um, really significant for me. Very cool. I don't know if, uh, Taylor is joining us. I don't know if Taylor wants to say anything. Yeah, I mean, you kind of got it, like especially after doing the, the live version where we were all together um, we never actually touched in that piece and we would like reach toward each other, but there was never that touch. So there was that, like that pull felt really real because we we're in the same space. So then being in this one and then trying to be synced up so that when we did get the sides of the screen, it felt like we could still feel that touch from the person, but then that, yeah, the like lagging, I actually had a glitch in this performance. It like stopped for a second and then picked back up and I was like, Darn, like I know I'm probably not with everyone right now and trying to kind of relish in that frustration, which we talked about doing before the show. Vlad kind of mentioned like, you know, a lot of us are feeling frustrated at different times and it's okay to feel that because especially through this virtual platform, you know, I was <laughs> right before the show, I'm texting my grandma like, you know, she doesn't know how to use Facebook and I'm like, please, I hope you can watch this. Here's this link. Here's this link, you know, try to refresh the page. And so there are all of these frustrations that happen in our real life when we interact virtually with family, with, you know, with people all over um, between figuring it out and glitching and it freezing and having to call back and things like that. So then those frustrations coming into this performance space and I'd be like, okay, part of me wants to just follow the person that I'm seeing and not follow my metronome because I know I'm behind. But I also kind of love that idiosyncrasy of like not being right on with that person. And I kind of just want to do what's true to the metronome. So it definitely like uh, syncing up it was a huge part of the piece, but also the lack of it became its own mm -hmm. part of the piece as well. And the emotions that came out of that and how we talked about it and navigated it. Yeah. So I know that this was developed originally as an in-person piece in December, as you talked about. Was there anything about the virtual setting that brought up different feelings or emotions, um, either as a performer or like kind of rewatching um, videos of these performances? Does the kind of two-dimensional setting create a different layer? Um, did you feel any different emotions, basically? Yeah, um, it was very, it was very different uh, in that it is like a 2D space. So there was a lot of stuff. Um, we had just had to recreate all of the movement basically because what we made in December and kind of what worked in three dimensional space where you can see it, people from every angle like didn't really translate in this like 2D thing but one thing that was really interesting was this like proximity and like distance and kind of the the kind of the sh shape of how the lens renders our bodies in digital space so we played with that a lot um but apart from that it was like it was just really hard it was just really stressful kind of uh, everything went slower than expected because you kept um there was a lot of things that we could have resolved in space really easily and quickly um, if we were together, but like we couldn't do it here. So that was difficult. Plus like sitting in front of a computer for three hours of rehearsal was like really, really intense. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting like um, when you're in person in 3D and especially in this kind of setting where people were able to walk around us, the only container that you can really think about is your body. So like we, the edges of your body are the container of what people see. Um, but with this, it wasn't the body. It was this rectangle here. And so that was just interesting in like how we talked about movement and how that influenced it. Awesome. So also uh, we had a question about whether or not your dancers um, could all see each other while performing, um, if that 
creates a stronger sense of dancing together for you. Um, and also uh, if like, how long was the rehearsal process and how did that all work? Um, the, the dancer, we were all in a Zoom room together so we could all see each other and we could all hear the same music as the audience was hearing. Um, I saw that there was one of the questions. And then uh, the rehearsals was uh, a total of 16 hours of rehearsal um, spread across five rehearsals. So it was like super quick. It was the fastest process I've ever done. Um, one thing that was good is that we kind of had the idea of what the score is going to be going into it. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have... Uh, spend time like developing the score because that's in December that was like most of our rehearsal was like figuring out how to talk about brutalism and stuff um but yeah as I said everything everything was like took longer than normal plus it was like 15 hours only 16 hours and so it was just like crazy <laughs> And speaking of the music, you briefly touched on it. Where did you find the music that accompanies this piece? And how did that inform the piece itself? It's the same, yeah, it, the music is um, Eliane Rodigue and she's this amazing, spectacular pioneer of electronic music that started doing it like 60 years ago, which was like decades before um, a lot of people who are credited as like the originators of, of um, electronic music were like doing stuff. She would use these like massive computers to generate like different feedback loops and, and make the music like you've heard tonight uh, with that. And um, she's not, she's French and not really related to brutalism, but she's from the like kind of right period of time. And um, I just really, um, I, I got the recommendation to listen to Ilian from Heather Kravis, who's a, a Seattle-based choreographer. And um, I basically opened, one time during rehearsal, I opened this song that you heard today and realized that it was an hour long and we did it to this song for an hour. And I was like, oh my God, it takes you through so many moods, through so many like weird moments and beautiful melodies and, um, We've, I, I just never, it kind of happened by chance, but I've never considered doing this piece to any other piece of music because it's just fits in perfectly with what we're doing. All right, I saw that your mom is wondering if you can speak on a bit of your inspiration for this project, maybe for Balkan audiences. Yeah, um, I'm gonna answer this in Serbian and if people want. Uh, English translation you can ask in the comments, but um, uh, inspiracija za ovaj komad je nekako bila uh, već nekoliko godina sam razmišljao o tome kako da napravim neki komad koji se bavi pitanjima Balkana i, i, i raspada Jugoslavije i tako to, ali zato što živim u Americi nisam znao kako da kako da to predstavim američkim publikama kroz neku, neko sočivo u kojem bi on mogli da se povežu sa tom pričom. Zato što Balkan je s druge strane, ja živim u Sjerp sad ovde što je skroz na, pacif, na o, o, pacifičkoj obali Amerike. Znači 9 sati vremenske razlike i kako sad da ja pričam o, o ljudima na Balkanu, Amerikancima, kada smo udaljeni pola svijeta i ne imamo stvara nikakve konekcije. Uh, I onda sam, kad sam se doselio u Sjetlu, u suštini sam shvatio koliko brutalističke zgrade ima ovde, zato što je bilo puno razvoja i u, u 1950. i 60. i dosta zgrada koje su u tom periodu izgrađene su a, izgrađene u tom brutalističkom stilu, što je bio isto stil Jugoslavije a, I, I komunizma generalno, isto tijel, sve komunističke i socialističke države su imale. Uglavnom, i onda sam shvatio da taj brutalizam može da bude kao poveznica između naše dve kulture u kojima bih mogli da, bi mogli da, da nekako nađemo zajedničku tačku da pričamo o, o Balkanu. A, 
Šta je tačno bilo pitanje? To je teško govoriti zato što da ste stvari sam ja namjerno stavio u rad, a dosta stvari su nekako proizašle iz rada dok smo, dok smo a, k- razrađivali teme i tako dalje i pokrete. I jedna stvar koja je meni jako zanimljiva je bila što, što dosta pričamo o tim momentima kad ljudi dođu zajedno i kada se raziđu. Znači kad svi, kad svi radimo isti, ko, isti korak u istom trenutku i tako dalje. I onda sam shvatio Razmišljao o tome kao u kontekstu ako smo uh, tamo Bosanci, Srbi, uh, Hrvati i Makedonci, svi, dobro ne Makedonci, ali te tri naroda, svi pričamo istim jezikom i, i možemo da se razumijemo, i znači imamo tu poveznicu i svako malo dođemo zajedno i, i možemo da razgovaramo, a onda ponovo neke tenzije se krenu rađati i onda moramo da se raziđemo ponovo. Um, to je bila jedna od političkih stvari koja je proizašla za mene. To nije sad našto što mora publika da shvati, ali to je u, u tom procesu je bilo za mene. E, u, to je bila inspiracija manje više za performance. And for someone, someone asked for translation, I was just talking how uh, it was really the brutalism emerged as an inspiration because I was wondering how to talk about the Balkans and the Bosnian War and Yugoslavia in the United States and what was the invitation for an American audience to feel like connected with the subject matter because the Balkan people are like half a world away. Um, You know, people here don't really care about that much about someone living half a world away and Um, but then I moved to Seattle and realized that there was a lot of brutalism here. And of course, brutalism was the main architectural style used in the uh, Yugos- Yugoslavia and other socialist and communist countries. So it felt like this familiar landscape for me. And then I was like, okay, if people in Seattle know, have seen these brutalist buildings that are in prominent locations, then also um, I could use that imagery of that architectural style to invite them into this other world that was also built um, to look in similarly. Yeah, and you mentioned that this is um, drawing a lot of inspiration from the breakup of Yugoslavia. Uh, was that uh, kind of a conscious choice from the beginning of this process or did it kind of evolve that way over time? Uh, njegovo pitanje da li, da li je ta neka pitanja Jugoslavije su bila prisutna skroz od početka ili e, su neko proizašle iz rada i mislim da mislim da su proizašle iz rada iz početka stvarno uh, ja kad kre, kreiram ovaj pleso ja stvarno pokušavam da, da krenem od neke veoma, veoma jednostavne tačke um, iz koje sve onda mogu da razrađujem neke teme i rad je počeo stvarno iz brutalizma i samo smo to gledali. Uh, Decembarski komad nije čak ni, uh, jako dugo nismo počeli uopšte da pričamo o Jugoslaviji, ni, ni o čemu. I jednostavno stvari su nekako, ne znam da li su one same od sebe izašle ili je to jednostavno, taj brutalizam je bio kao neki konduktor za, za neke stvari koje su bile već u meni da izađu napolje. Tako da, Vjerujem da su pitanje Jugoslavije bila prisutna u nekom kontekstu, negdje u pozadnju mog mozga, ali nisu izašle dok nismo počeli da radimo. And so, the uh, questions of Jugoslavia weren't really present that much in the very, very beginning of the process. I like to start from like a very simple point of inspiration and structure. Um, so for me, it was like, let's focus specifically on brutalism and the lines, the aesthetic, Um, kind of some of the principles, weight, uh, and then kind of as we were working just specifically on this, like layers of meaning emerged and um, which probably means that like the questions of Yugoslavia were already in the back of my head somewhere and present. Um, They just needed to have a vessel through which to emerge into the world and Yeah, so I don't know. It's like a chicken and an egg question, kind of. 
And for American audiences that may not have a lot of context in the breakup of Yugoslavia as a history, could you just briefly speak to what aspects of that history you kind of see in the performance and kind of connect that for some audiences that may not be so familiar? Um, it was just like uh, the Yugoslavia was uh, a conglomeration of a lot of countries who were all brought together under the same name Yugoslavia and it was like a socialist country and after some time after the the kind of ruler I don't know what the proper president what the proper title it was but um, uh, after he died like tensions started to arise and all of these people that were for decades living as like brothers and sisters um, suddenly started fighting amongst each other. And then it created like this crazy, extremely bloody war. Um, so it was just this like very jarring ex like dissonance and between people who were so close together, all of a sudden not seeing eye to eye at all. Um, that's kind of the connection for me. Great, and then the last question that was brought up in the chat uh, was, what is the significance of the dancer's ID numbers? And is there a purpose that you see behind the anonymity created by giving performers numbers instead of names? Um, also, T Taylor, if you ever wanna talk about anything, please jump in. Um, the numbers, it was more, it was just like, when we were in the space in December, we we the the numbers are coordinates of specific Yugoslav monuments that um, the dancers were performing, and uh, in December we had it all written out on on cinder blocks. And this time I just said I I would like to do it on uh, instead of names because if you go to a dance space and look at the dancers, unless you know them personally, you don't know their names, they're not carrying like tags. Um, so it was just like, it was weird for me, everyone needed to have a name and it was just weird to have it be like Vladimir Taylor because then you would, I think like focus more on them as like people, which is, uh, that sounds horrible. Um, there was already so many opportunities for you to see the human in the performers because we're all doing the same movement, which allows you time to like really notice how everyone is different from each other. Um, and I just wanted to kind of protect the performers anonymity a little bit and have the freedom for them to express themselves fully without necessarily, um, I don't know, kind of that. Yeah, Taylor. I also, so, <laughs> when we talked, when you talked about it, for some reason, my like sound wasn't working. This was on, I think, Friday when you decided that. And so I didn't know. And then I, I was told and I was like, okay, okay, number is going to be my name. That's kind of cool. But I don't see it when I'm dancing. I, I don't see it. Does it pop oh, up yeah. in the thing? Yeah. Um, but I think it's kind of fun because it like gives a hint to everyone about what we're doing. And if you're somebody who like wants to follow patterns, like there's a way for you to like, this is like a small little hint that you didn't even know you had and like to, to help you figure out our mesmerizing pattern of movement of repetition. Um, but it also, I mean, it, it is the legit, like it is the coordinate of the building that inspired a lot of us, you know, th this whole slideshow that Ben put together, we were able to learn a lot about the history as performers because a lot of us didn't know a lot of this history until Ben and Vlad were able to kind of like put some stuff together and give us a little history lesson and show us a lot of these brutalist monuments and structures and buildings. So now, now that people know that that's what it is, you can also literally look up the the coordinate and be like okay what is this building you know that inspired the dancers to to be moving so it's kind of cool that it's able to be out there you know i mean um just having having that little thing there now that we've talked about it but i also there's something about how because of the way that it's set up i was i can't remember who it was, i think it was one of my roommates who watched it on friday kind of mentioned that it felt like looking through like windows of one of the brutalist buildings because there's just like so many windows, you know? And so it yeah. looked like like yeah. you were like standing on the sidewalk walk, looking through these windows and seeing all of these people in their own homes doing something so similar. 
And, and I was inspired to look at it that way during this performance and having that number there and seeing everybody's numbers or like in the chat when people are talking, like, I don't know by heart whose numbers are who. So then I just see a number talking and I'm like, okay, this is another person in the same building that I'm in that is saying these things. So it kind of added this like fluff on the back end for the performers as well, even though it was sort of just used to be, you know, just to not have our names up, but it kind of added this special little fluff on the inside that gave it, gave the piece a, a little bit more of a world that it was in, which was kind of fun. Yeah, I, oh, I totally can see I that as translate well. a little bit really quick? Yeah. Um, then our question was, was it just a little kind of inspiration for these projects that you see in the lower left corner? And those are the coordinates of the building that we used. Our pockets were informed with these numbers. And we were able to see it. To smo mi pratili, a i onda publika je mogla da prati ako je to nešto bilo zašto je bilo zainteresovan. I svaki koordinat je povezan sa spomenikom, jugoslovenskim nekim spomenikom posvećenom za drugi svjetski rat, osim spomenika Ilinden u Makedoniji koji je bio podignut za jedan osmanski boj, za protiv osmanskih carstva. Yeah, and going off what uh, Taylor said about looking in through windows at this little society, I was thinking a lot about how having the numbers kind of makes it feel like you're almost one, you're like nine members of like a random population of, I don't know, 40 something million. And you're one of many that is kind of going about this life, this routine of dancing in these movements and sometimes syncing up and encountering one another and other times going your own way. And I think that it created a, a sense of there being a world beyond just the performance that was being watched. Um, as a final question for you guys, I know that you've previously only been rehearsing and performing this in the evening. Were there any different feelings that came up rehearsing it or at, performing it today in the late morning in Seattle for audiences primarily on the other side of the world. Can you, do you want to talk about it? First and foremost, I usually wake up at about 11. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, set an alarm, let's go. <laughs> Um, I definitely, I felt like I came into it in more of a whirlwind as opposed to like, you know, rehearsals and even, you know, the Friday performance, uh, you know, I'm still pretty, pretty much in quarantine. So I spent most of the day just being like, okay, the show's coming or like rehearsals coming, I'm getting ready, take my time, ease into it mentally and emotionally, let myself get there. And this morning I was like, okay, I gotta eat, I gotta shower, I've gotta open my computer, I've gotta make sure my stuff is ready. And I try to do all of it in like 10 minutes. <laughs> and so I felt like yeah. I kind of yeah. I was very emotional coming into this one because I didn't have time to like have my me time to emotionally prepare just because I'd naturally wake up very late yeah. I'm a yeah. night bird uh, and that is with going to bed at like 10 30 last night <laughs> I still woke up at like nine um so but it definitely it was it was weird and then having the sunlight coming in as opposed to it getting darker and my shadow is getting brighter so just the context of the space and everyone else's space that I was looking at just being generally brighter and like on top of that feeling more emotional and um yeah I definitely felt very different doing it uh at 11 o'clock in the morning uh Seattle time Pacific Standard Time yeah, I yeah, totally, I felt the same, same thing with like the whirlwind and especially like setting up tech and uh, it was crazy, but that's just, you know, it's just so interesting. Um, like I've taken dance classes from this room. This is my like office, home office, and I've taken dance classes from here. I've um, taken so many like work meetings and done so much work and um, because I have a day job and um, 
And then like finally, as like this final marker and chapter of quarantine, like doing an hour long performance in this room, it, I just, it's just so crazy that we live in this world now where like my, um, uh, the, our, our, my stage is this just room in my house and I, we were able to perform out of it, which is crazy. I mean, we were always able to perform out of it from, you know, but um, something about like coming together now for this moment. And I think, um, yeah, and I feel like it kind of fit within this, within the, the scope of the work, which is about like finding connection and kind of, uh, kind of following the rules of the dance, rebelling against the rules of the dance. Uh, I don't know, it was just really interesting to explore that from the home of the people who are in it. All right, well, um, if you guys have anything else to add, uh, feel free to speak up, but for audiences that are still hanging around with us, if you want to, uh, on Velocity's website for this event, which I'll repost in the chat, there's a full gallery of visual and text resources about brutalism that you can look into if you want to learn more about what inspired the performers. Um, and also keep in mind that while this performance was free, if you'd like to support the artists and this project, then tax deductible donations can be made through that same link on Velocity's website. And I'll also repost a PayPal and Venmo that you can use to pay the dancers directly. Oh yeah. Um... I'm just really happy that my that you know my family got to finally see me perform in, in person, um, and I don't know, it just that just brings me so much joy. Palam si much to se se prikuchuli z se Balkana i z koje već zemlje dolazite i ja ću ostati na chat i dalje ako ako budete imali neka još pitanja ili možete poslat na Instagramu ili šta već ali ovaj, ne znam, jedan najljepši dio ovog performansa za mene je bilo što možemo da ga podijelimo u isto vrijeme sa publikama u Sjetlu i sa publikom u, na Balkanu, u Srbiji i u Hrvatskoj i u Bosni. I ovo je bio prvi put, pošto živimo Merce sedam godina, ovo je bio prvi put da sam izveo neki svoj rad na Balkanu i da sam se osjećao kao da ga izvodim na Balkanu, iako sam bio već udaljen pola svijeta. Uglavnom, hvala što ste priključili. Um, thank you everyone from Seattle and the West Coast and the United States who joined in too. This was really a surreal global performance that, um, you know, there's so many horrible things about the quarantine and the pandemic and to like, for nine people to like have that moment, this moment of dancing together um, and sharing a virtual space was really wonderful and healing and fulfilling. And um, yeah, so thank you for being part of that with your presence. Okay. Thanks everyone. <laughs>